Hey teacher friends, it's back to school time and boy do I really love all the classroom setup videos that are going on. It is awesome to see these excited new teachers or teachers who are changing grade levels or changing schools and uh, setting up their classrooms. It's fantastic. But I can tell you as an experienced teacher, I spend a lot less time on that kind of stuff um, than I do other preparations. So I kind of thought, let's do a video on the stuff that an experienced teacher does to prepare for the school year. Um, not to diss anybody who's doing all the fancy, cute decorating stuff, but um, there are other things that you can focus on, especially if you don't have a lot of budget for all that fancy stuff um, that are gonna make your life easier. So one of the first things that I would strongly suggest that you do is to make your own teacher planner. This is my teacher planner. And uh, I make it so that I can, let's see if we can get all of it in there. I can view a whole week at a time and I put a quarter at a time in my notebook. Um, it does take a little while to, to lay it all out and make it work. And you can see it's not quite, you can see it's not quite lining up, but that's okay. Um, and I love doing this because I can write down my schedule. I don't have to rewrite it every day. I can also change the boxes. So things like lunch and read aloud, they don't need very big boxes, um, but my main core subjects do need a lot of boxes. And I like, like I said, to have a week um, at a glance. So after I do that and I print that at school, um, then I start going through with a, a highlighter. And I use that because it's bright and colorful, but it tends to not bleed through to the next page and I start marking things. So I write things um, in my after school section like meetings and things. Um, I write things um, up in the, the before school section, um, things just to remind myself of or things that need to remind the students of. So I start with my district calendar and um, I do things like, you know, I mark Labor Day and any holidays or things like that, professional development days. Um, then I go through the school calendar. The school calendar is where you get things like um, leadership team meetings and um, club signups and vision screenings and all those other kinds of things that need to go on uh, for the quarter. And then I go back and I start marking things that we've agreed on as a team. Now, as a team, we put together a curriculum map um, during the summer and to get us all organized for the year. And um, so we do things like we decide when our interventions are going to start. We decide um, when we're going to start and stop our different math modules. Um, we decide things we're gonna, where we're going to start and stop science because we do switch for science when we're beginning different programs. Um, when we're giving uh, pre-assessments or we're giving um, when we're having special events in our grade level. Um, so those all go in color. Now I used to color code them if you really want to be, you know, kind of type A about it. I used to color code them by if they were district, school, or grade level or personal to me, but I just like, you know, who's got time for that? Let's just get one color and put all that stuff in. Uh, now the other thing that I do is I start analyzing student data and we have a lot of access to student data so I create these sheets. Now I have to recreate them every year because my, uh, my, my district decides on different assessments pretty much every year. But they have, each page has a front and a back. The front is ELA and the back is math. So uh, for example, my um, school requires a cadence. So I start with the third, uh, the end of third grade scores, EOY means end of year, and then I do the fourth grade beginning of the year, and this is a space where I can write some sort of analysis, and then the middle of the year, an analysis, and then the end of year. And then we're required to give um, reading assessments, 
Um, and then of course we have the rise, which is our high stakes testing. Um, and then on the back, um, we've got our three different math benchmarks for multiplication facts, 0 through 5, 6 through 12, and then division facts. Um, we use the Into Math program and it has a growth measurement. So again, I look at the end of year in third grade and then um, our beginning of the year and middle of the year in, and then end of year in fourth grade. And then we have quarterly math assessments and then of course our math high stakes testing. So I start filling this out. This information is available for students who've been in my school before and oftentimes given a few weeks if I look in the cumulative file of new students it's going to be there as well. So I fill this out as much as I can for each student. I used to keep them in my planner but I don't do that anymore. I keep it in a separate binder um, and just because I don't feel like I need to carry this around with me all the time but I do need to have it uh, accessible. So I hope you did, you've enjoyed this video, not fun and exciting really, about how an experienced teacher prepares to go back to school. TTFN, ta-ta for now.